Hello and welcome to The Hearing, I'm John. And from Chicago's north side, I am Scotto. And before we get to this week's album, we've got, again, some listeners submitted. Um, after I posted last week's episode on my, you know, I retweeted it on my Twitter account, I had a brief exchange with uh, Sean Drinkwater from Freespa. Uh, he first said, delightful review, thank you. I, I said, you're welcome and thank you. I'm um, glad you enjoyed it. He said, spoiler, there are no electric guitars on the album. No way, Really? Uh, I, I was very surprised. I said, wow, you did an uh, amazing job impersonating them with a synth. To which he replied, the one sound I used a lot was an old Fairlight soft flange guitar sample. We do run the synths, th- the synths th- through amps a lot. Queen is that, for example. Uh, Queen of Tomorrow, yeah. the first track. So, yeah, um, in my slight defense, it's a sample of a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I mean, it sounded like a guitar. Mm-hmm. It just ran through. It was a guitar, <laughs> a, a recording of a guitar played on a keyboard. Um, at least for uh, probably the other tracks, the New Order style ones. Um, the Queen was apparently just a synth through an amplifier, and you know the amp does add a lot of character to the sound of a guitar, um, particularly a solid body. Really, the only things determining the sound of a solid body electric guitar are the pickups, the electronics, maybe the scale length. And the amplifier. That's all that matters with the sound. So, you know, running a synth through an amp is going to give it a lot of... A guitar amp is going to give it a lot of guitar quality. Uh, a lot of characteristics of a guitar. So, yeah, that was very impressive. Um, yeah. I also appreciated what um, both Sean and the band said on their... Um, sh- when they shared the episode. They both posted it on Twitter and, and Facebook. Um Sean said, really interesting and detailed review of the Freeze Pop album. A few things I hadn't thought of. We've gotten that <laughs> note before. I always love hearing it. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> when, when the creator of something, you know, says that we, we brought up some stuff that they hadn't thought of. And, and uh, Freeze Pop on Facebook's, uh, on their Facebook post of it said, uh, super in-depth review of Fantasizer. And a couple more notes about that. Um, I was reading a review from That's Good Enough For Me dot com of that album. And um, they also mentioned that that heart rate reminded them of Heartbeat City by the Cars. Um, I, I mentioned this in a reply and, you know, complimented yeah. them on the review. And, and Sean said, um, that's kind of fascinating. We certainly never talked about it, but we do like that album a lot. <laughs> so that's two people pointing out that that song sounds like it could have been in Heartbeat City. Um, one last thing about Freeze Pop, because um, I forgot to mention this last week. If you haven't seen the their Kickstarter videos, please check them out. Um, they're both on, on YouTube. Just search Freeze Pop Kickstarter. Both really hilarious. Um, now, one more thing. Um, so, it turns out I've been checking the wrong email account for like two years. <sighs> when I set up our YouTube channel, I it was originally... The account was originally John and Scotto Show because we were going to re- originally just do the John and Scotto Show Phase Out Zombie Takeout, our movie review show. Um, and so I, I set up John and Scotto Show at gmail.com. That's what the YouTube channel is on. That's the email account I've been checking. I also set up John and Scotto at gmail.com just as a backup. And that's what I ended up putting on the sidebar on this website. So. That's what people have been emailing. That's the one I haven't been checking. I checked it over the weekend. Large sums of cash waiting for us from all that time, right? But but quite a few people. No money. No. Oh, damn. Quite a few people submitted stuff for us to review. Quite a bit of music. At least one movie. I I need to look through more thoroughly. Apologies for not replying and not checking it until this weekend. Uh, We will be going through it, um, looking for stuff for next year. Um, The rest of the year is kind of booked out. But you know, so again, sorry about that. And finally, on to this week's movie, which, or sorry, album, which is from 2008, <laughs> Sound of Silver by LCD Sound System. So LCD Sound System is an American electronic rock band from Brooklyn, New York, formed in 2002. In February of 2011, the band announced on their site that they were disbanding. <laughs> However, this turned out to just be a five-year hiatus. Um, the band's reunion was confirmed on January 4th, 2016, with the announcement that they would be headlining the 2016 Coachella. It was actually a ruse. Oh, it they, was a deliberate they, ruse. Okay. They, they knew they were going to be 
taking a few years between albums uh-huh. and uh he'd always wanted to play madison square garden oh so <laughs> yeah, their, their their farewell show was msg right yes so he uh that, that was the only way they could play msg oh, God. and uh they're like oh oh did we say that was our last show <laughs> Well, they admitted it too freely when they came out with the last album. Nice. Uh, Sound of Silver is LCD Sound System's second studio album. It was released on March 12th, 2007, jointly through um, DFA and Capitol Records in the US and EMI elsewhere. I think the elsewhere is probably 2008, which is why I have that as a year. Um, produced by the DFA and features James Murphy on. Take a deep breath for this one. Vocals, drums, percussion, bass, programming, pianos, <laughs> synthesizers, claps, guitar, organ, Casio. I don't know why they mentioned Casio separate from keyboards. Um, <laughs> I don't know either. Guitar, bass, clavinet, glockenspiel, electronic percussion, fun machine, and kalimba. I also forgot to look up fun. what a fun machine is, but it's probably <laughs> one of those things that are, you know, just that they invented that I can't easily find. Um <laughs> Patrick Mahoney, drums, percussion, claps, and vocals. Tyler Pope, guitar, bass, fun machine again, and claps. And Nancy Wong on vocals with additional musicians. Eric Bocek, guessing on that pronunciation, apologies if I got it wrong. Claps on track three, vocals on track six. Marcus Lamkin, claps on track three. And Morgan Wiley on piano. Justin Chirno, Chirno on guitar. Jane Scarpet, Scarpentoni on cello. I really need to practice names um, beforehand. Um, Lorenzo Pons on violin, uh, Amy Kimball on violin, and David Gold on viola. All of that from Morgan Wiley on is on track nine. Um, you did uh, really well with all the Irish names. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> and now onto the tracks, of course. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into the reviews for copyright reasons. But down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog, John and Scotto, you'll find links to, I had them last week's, links to Sound of Silver uh, on Spotify and YouTube, so you can follow along if you'd like. I kind of just copied and pasted that from last week's review without changing the names. <laughs> See, I had always thought that this was just like a Nine Inch nail sort of thing, and James Murphy, you know, That's kind was of the it guy. <laughs> And yeah, studio wise, that that is the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, there there was an episode of them doing Austin City Limits though that it just you know stumbled on, and was just floored to see that it was a band playing all of this. Well, Nine Inch Nails is a band sequencer. live. It's not just Trent Reznor live. True, but you don't. Ex- I mean, that's not stuff that's like oh yeah, you know that's just sequencing or whatever to mm-hmm. hold you know the kind of pace that they hold here right whereas humans playing this is like wait what (laughs) the impression i get from reading those credits is that you know murphy does 90 percent of it but he's not really he's not really a drummer so he has patrick mahoney and he's not a great guitar player so he has tyler pope (laughs) right again starting with the tracks uh track one get innocuous Nice, classic, old-school drum machine at the top of this one. Great groove. The, the build is so slow and A little too slow, I think. <laughs> it, it's like, it's stuff sounds, it begins at such a low level, you're not even sure initially that it's a part of the song. Mm-hmm. You're kind of like, wait, is there something going on outside my headphones, you know? Yeah. Um, and you're like, no, no. It gets louder, and you hear that it is part of it. And it does really pick up when you get that staccato riff coming in. I don't know if it's a synth or a guitar. Um, like the kind of offbeat stabs on the piano. And I like the kind of low-in-the-mix, soft, harmonized, kind of off-time vocals. That was an interesting choice. Right. And to begin it that way. You yeah. can't even really understand what he's saying. No. It's almost like a Gregorian <laughs> but there, chant. The it's way not it just all all harmonized they're like out of sync with each other too oh yeah yeah it's like a gregorian meets morrissey you yeah. know? <laughs> or bowie actually <laughs> i think i think that's what he was going for well, here more you than mentioned anything else bowie. it gets yeah. very bowie in the chorus where the vocals get louder. yes oh yeah yeah uh, and then once he gets to like you know <laughs> 
the the over effect he finally understand what he's saying a bit mm -hmm. more very bowie at that point and then we get this interesting chanted bridge from i'm guessing it's a woman's voice i'm guessing that's nancy wong yes um, it does and this is going to be a note i go back to it yeah. does get a bit repetitive oh yeah <laughs> i won't deny that that's most of the album um mm -hmm. but i do like at the end how the bass kind of follows that staccato riff and then just overtakes it right it, the, the sharpest vocals on this are actually the female vocals i mean they're you know you have his vocals just kind of you know all meandering at the beginning and then kind of sharp yeah. but still out of focus mm -hmm. and then her little chant at the end yeah it's just to the bone kind of right you know you can normalize don't it make you feel alive yeah yeah that that is a good line um, and the the atonal strings were a nice choice at the end and they come out of nowhere too yeah or or do they or like like wait a minute were we listening to that all along you know you get a lot of that in this where it's like there, there's so many things stacked on each mm -hmm. other yeah and then they take things away and you're kind of like wait where's this or was that that wait we've been listening to that this whole time but i don't <laughs> think we were in this one i think no. the strings do pop up and then kind of die yeah i don't think <laughs> those, those strings were so atonal and jarring i don't i think if they had been there the whole time i would have noticed yeah yeah um on to track two time to get away the groove on this one is very disco Reminds yes. me a lot of like very recent white folk, like all of the Wolfpack clones. And I think Wolfpack, who came around in 20, 2011, kind of took a lot from these guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I just thought this was a straight up like Nile Rogers. Yeah. You know. Um, it reminds me of a line I heard about disco many years ago. Disco was funk being played by white people. Right. And this, I mean, yeah, well, I think they get a lot more funkier than this later on. Yeah, but yeah, yeah they this, this is probably, like, the poppiest song I would think on the album. <laughs> it's, it's just Nile Rodgers kind of yeah. pleasant. You know, I'd probably pick this as my, my choice for weakest on the mm -hmm. album, actually. Um, the vocal gymnastics do remind me a lot of Prince's Kiss. Mm. Though he just kind okay. of jumps off. Yeah, his... um, I could see that. I do like, and this continues through the album. The one thing I do have to give them a lot of credit for, the vocals are very different on each track. He takes this tour throughout this whole album where, it, yeah, he's not just doing one person. Mm -hmm. um, it he's... does, again, and, you know, I'm, I'll just briefly mention this from now on. It gets repetitive because every song on, almost every song on this gets repetitive. Um, mm -hmm. But there is a nice sudden stop at the end. Yeah. I like how it just take it stops out of nowhere. Um, I've always just viewed this song as the build up to, of course, the next track. <laughs> mm -hmm. On to track three, nice segue. North American scum, <laughs> nice chip tune opening. Um, like the bass sound. The lyrics are really just about, or just him whining about being looked on, looked down on for being American in Europe. <laughs> Yes, yes, pretty much. <laughs> the embarrassment of traveling overseas yeah. and dealing with our reputation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost, it's he, they they do this a couple times where they come close to like a a punk feel to yeah. the song. It's still in like a disco parameter. <laughs> um, the repetitiveness of this one reminds me a bit of Pearl Jam. How on a lot of songs, Pearl Jam will just lock into one groove and just ride it. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, that's oh. totally what this is about, though, is finding that groove mm -hmm. and riding the groove. Um, I do like how it picks up in the chorus. There's some nice, fuzzy either guitar or synth. Um, the vocals, and I think the song in general, has a bit of kind of either a White Stripes or a Strokes vibe to it. Hmm. That, that's a good call. I, like, um, you get this, you know, the, the, the verse is actually a bit quiet. It's mostly just the yeah. warbled Right. The bass but then that sets up the chorus which has this pop because you've got this weird ghostly falsetto howl mm -hmm. kind of going underneath it and just yeah like like on paper this song is just madness <laughs> it rem that ghostly howl from that that way his voice goes up reminded me a lot of jack white but 
they were pretty much contemporaries, so they probably were yeah. both pulling from the same source. Same thing with the Strokes. They were all pretty contemporary. Um, this was actually the first song I'd ever heard by them, I think. Um, but, you know, it was like the intro to the to the Ron and Fez show for a while, okay. and it was kind of like, oh, I gotta, you know, I gotta check this band out, kind of thing, and it, it led me to this album. Hmm. On to track four, Someone Great. Some really nice volumes falls in the beginning. Like the kind of high tapped melody. Not like guitar tapped. The Van Halen review will be in a couple of weeks. Um, but <laughs> just kind of like kind of like a rim shot, like the edge of the rim of a drum kind of sounded like. Um, nice bass line, um, like the sound of the synth. And it's really nice synth work. Nice blippy part before the vocals come in. Again, changes the vocals up. Is it all Murphy singing lead? Yeah. He does an incredible job of chameleoning his voice in each song. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, this one, just atmospheric. Uh, man, it's probably as close to a downshift as you'll get for them, or yeah. close to a ballad. Uh, although later on, they do some things, like he, they kind of a lullaby in the latest. Yeah. Um, you know, and I always knew this song was about losing someone, because obviously, oh, but yeah. I never really paid attention to the lyrics specifically and it was just i was just kind of blown away by them actually <laughs> for this one at least mm. i mean he does some really good lyrics on some others but just you know the stanza of the worst is all the lovely weather mm. i'm stu- stunned it's not raining the coffee isn't even bitter because what's the difference mm. and <laughs> you know just that whole losing someone and feeling like this cataclysm has happened and the world should just be totally upside down and then just to find out that it's it's not really and it's just so it's just so weird to get over that and he did it in four lines i can't even like just to sum all that up in four lines like the coffee isn't even bitter it's such a nice little detail yeah also nice it's pretty soft. damn close to my pick for strongest but mm-hmm. i don't know Nice soft vocal, really nice melody. Um, nice to hear a timing change for, a, for in a song, one of these songs. Um, <laughs> and it's the first song that to me didn't sound like typical indie rock. Yeah, because you know, I, I just I don't have the gene for that indie rock thing. I, it just doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> if I were maybe ten years younger, <laughs> I don't even know. I mean. Does this really sound? But does most of this even sound like rock? Well, you know, until, it's kind of. I, I would say it's a rock album, but I mean, up until that point, they do swerve from the indie sound at this from this point onward, except for the vocals in the next one. Speaking of which, I would say North American Scum would be like the closest thing we've seen to rock so far, because everything else is just kind of these weird. Well, okay, I guess time to get away is pop, but I don't know. In, indie rock, maybe maybe rock was the wrong word. Indie. <laughs> Mainstream yeah. indie sound. Um, on to track five, All My Friends. This is a, this was a cl- close to my favorite. This was a really strong one. Uh, like the frenetic piano part. Um, yeah. It's, and it the, reminds me a lot of the, of the Lamb, a simple yeah. version of Genesis, the Lamb. Lies much down simpler. On Broadway. <laughs> yeah. It, it sounds really complicated, but I listen closely. It's, it's just, he's just banging out two chords in different times. Um, but the and this is build... what I meant. Hmm. Like to imagine a human playing that yeah. is like, wait, what? <laughs> like I just imagine, I just assumed that was a sequence, or you know. And I can imagine a human, a good piano player playing it. It's really the timing is the only complicated part because it's really just a juggling act, timing wise. Um, You're right. Practice it enough to get it down, but the build is just maddening, which I love. It's a seven and a half minute song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't feel like it. No. Um, love the and he bass. tells this epic story mm-hmm. in this seven minutes, too, without even using a whole lot of words about, I mean, it's just like four verses just about being young and partying to, you know, the drugs run out and, right. you know, you start a family and then yeah. you're wondering, like, where are my friends kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, bass tone's great. The whip sound is interesting. There's a whip sound that <laughs> just kind of hits now and then in the song. Um, the vocal on this one's kind of typically indie, but it's the only song that I can say that about. Um, the off-kilter, the 
guitar that comes in towards the end of verse one is nice. And he does something very impressive. I'm not going to complain about the repetition in this one. Because <laughs> even though it is just that piano riff over and over and over again, when he gets to the chorus, he manages to change the timing with the vocal delivery. <laughs> the The chorus vocal rhythm is completely different. And it really does change the song like a chorus normally would, even though everything behind it just steamrolls on. Reminds me a lot of Joy Division. Mm, yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, like, so a weird combination of old Genesis meets Joy Division, yeah. which I don't know if I'd ever thought of before. <laughs> also, nice feedback that comes in at the end and in, in the second half. Um, love that. On to track six, Us V Them. This is my pick for weakest. Um, another disco groove. Um, I do like how the drum, this one drum comes in and kind of messes with it. It does remind me a lot of Talking Heads, but not in the good way. I would say this is like a straight up funk song. I think they were going for like the parliament, you know, the lyrics are just super minimal, mostly just chants over that groove. And Talking Heads went for that a lot, too, and I don't think it ever worked yeah. for them either. Um, the Well, I don't know. I've, I liked a lot of Talking Heads. I love Talking Heads, but the stuff that were... It's it's my aversion to repetition in that sense, I guess. Um, but I mean, you know, it's the Zimbra and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. which I think it was a huge influence on these guys, too. Um, uh this is kind of like the Amen break for the drum loop, isn't it? I mean, a little bit, yeah. I, I can hear that. It's some, it's it's somebody playing it on like metallic drums or bells. I think he called it the song. Mm. So it's not exactly a sampling of the Amen right. break, but it's, but it's, it's somebody playing it. it live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the vocal gets a bit white stripes again. Um, like I said, they're contemporaries. I think they were just pulling from the same source. Um, the harmonized vocal, very Bowie. Um, the, my big problem with the song, actually, I was kind of, I was enjoying it for the first few minutes. Yeah. It was fun. But then it just goes on for like eight minutes. Oh, yeah. It's just too damn long. <laughs> That's the only reason it's my pick for weakest. Yeah. It's just cut, cut it in half and it would be fine. <laughs> yeah. The point of this, though, is the groove and just taking it like that. Yeah. And there's so many instruments that get moved in and out of this one too. And then like the percussions at the end just drown out so much. Mm. <laughs> On to track seven, watch the tapes. This is kind of a nice punk groove, I guess. Yeah. It's punk. <laughs> yeah, I think this was as probably as close to punk as they get. Um, nice muted guitar. Bass line kind of reminds me of the Stones. Um, there's this one Stones riff that it reminds me of. I don't know what song it is because I'm not a Stones fan, but... <laughs> Um, it actually reminds me a lot of Roxy music. Okay. Which, like even his voice, you know, the, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> that, that means I set things up right for next week. Cause next week we're doing Roxy music. Um, Where were we? I thought we were doing the tribute next week. No, that's two weeks away. I wanted to keep these uh, three in a row. Okay. Cause they, they okay. play well and nice all together. Freeze pop into these guys, into Roxy music. Yeah. Um, go, go back and listen to this one when we have to do Roxy music and tell me yeah. he doesn't sound exactly like fairy. Yeah. Um, uh, probably the goofiest song on the album though. I think, you know, just mm -hmm. capturing that time of youth. You know, there's they're, a, they're not taking it anywhere. They're just yeah. going with the exuberance. Right. There's a chord change in the chorus. That was a nice change of pace. Like they literally changed from one chord to another. That was a nice change of pace. Um, it's just, again, really repetitive. Don't have much to say after that. Um, we all get a little drunk, and then we act like apes. On to track eight, the penultimate song. This was my favorite until I got to the last song. Seven yeah. Silver. <laughs> <laughs> Love the lyrics. It's just like five lines repeated over and over again, but the five lines are brilliant. Sound of Silver, Talk to Me, makes you want to feel like a teenager until you remember the feelings of a real-life emotional teenager, then you think again. <laughs> yeah, one thing, it's like, yeah, they are mostly disco, of course, yeah. and synth, or synth pop or synth rock or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. but he has the snarkiness of the guy from Cake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I'm wondering, when he says Sound of Silver, what is that? Like, is it a self retro? Is it a self-reference to the album? Uh, 
Well, from what I understand, <laughs> and I just found out about this last night, was that I think he got invited out to record for Rick Rubin. Okay. And okay. absolutely hated the experience uh-huh. and singing in front of somebody else uh-huh. that he wound up like getting aluminum foil and like covering all the walls with it. Oh God. <laughs> So he so couldn't think... see Rick. He couldn't see anybody watching him. Uh, yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so he most. I'm guessing he records at home all the time then. Yes. No, he okay. just records at home. <laughs> <For that>. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in that situation. It can be very intimidating. Um, That's kind of weird. You're kind of like you know trying. To, well, even doing just doing anything artistic, and someone's like watching it. You just kind of like, yeah. What the fuck am I doing this for? <laughs> Well, there's that, and there's also, I can't fuck up, I can't fuck up, I can't fuck up, I can't fuck mm-hmm. up. I don't want to look like an idiot. <laughs> Especially when it's somebody popular, somebody well-known, you know? I get bad so, enough, I get that bad enough just on my own at home, I don't record much. So this is kind of a fake out, this song. It, it kind of feels like this is the climax of the album, mm-hmm. because it kind of circles back to Let's Get Innocuous and the... Yeah you know, this, the soundscape of this, but mm-hmm. I mean, it is a, a bit different from it. Yeah. It's more new order Depeche mode. <laughs> love Brian, all, you know. yeah, love all the percussion, great bass sound, love how it all just builds. And then there's a break where it go, turns into, it goes completely different for a while. Yeah. Um, lots of about, more percussion. What about the piano out of left field? Yeah, like I love it, like the... the two minute mark. You're just yeah. like, wait a minute. What was that? And it's just like this one note. <laughs> yeah. One chord on a piano out of nowhere. And that's all you hear of it. And that marks the change into this B section that goes on for uh-huh. a while. And then like a couple minutes later, you hear that, that chord again yeah. strikes. And you're like, oh. <laughs> that marks the, they're coming back to the A section. Yeah. You know, you hit that piano chord marks. We're switching to this B section, which some nice, which has some nice bluffy synths. Um, and then you hear that again, and they bring it back to the original. And I didn't even mind that they were coming back to the original groove because there was this nice diversion, and it's just a great groove. Um, and everything fades in and out. Like, like for, it's kind of shocking though that piano because everything is so electronic and ethereal. Mm-hmm. And then the piano hits that chord, and it's just so desolate and yeah. heavy. It just hangs there. Love the bottle sounds toward the end. Um, and yeah, there's just really just two sections to the song that just play off of each other beautifully. Um, it's one of two songs that I added to my late songs on Spotify from this album. Um, the other is track nine, my pick for favorite, New York. Yeah, I love you, too. but you're bringing me down. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I love North American scum so much. Mm-hmm. I, I really love when someone great now, but uh, yeah, this one is just, this is the perfect companion to an open letter to a landlord mm-hmm. by living color yeah. or um, brick body kids still daydream by, right. you know, open bike Eagle. It's just, it's perfect lament yeah. about gentrification. Mm-hmm. Love that. The first half is just this simple piano ballad. It was such right. a, such a refreshing on at the end of this album just to have piano and vocal and a little bit of staccato bass and some acoustic drums right it's just a straight up blues rock song after this whole electronic hullabaloo <laughs> you know you're just like what they really it completes the tour yeah. you know and i love the line i mean all disrespect <laughs> But you're still the one pool where I'd happily drown. And yeah. oh, take me off your mailing list for kids who still think who think it still exists. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's this whole, you know, I mean, growing up, I visited New York often enough to know what it was like and mm-hmm. how much it's changed. Okay. Hell, I've lived in Chicago for what, for thir- I forget how many years now at this point. And it has changed so much, even before all this shit happened, hit the fan. It has changed so much over the decade and a half I've been here. Actually, as of this month, 14 years, because you moved in October. Jesus, you remember that and I don't. October of 2000, <laughs> 2006, because that's the month we took off. Oh, right, right. 
we started the t we started CES in October of 2005. Did almost a year of weekly shows, roughly weekly. Um, we took off in October of 2006, so you could move. And then the, there's like seven more episodes of TAS over three years because, you know, it was a sporadic thing. It took us a while to get the hang of recording remotely. Yeah. So, yeah, as of this month, it's been 14 years. Wow. Wow, 14. And, yeah, this place had changed so much since then. And it's still changing now. Like, just the, the populations that have been here are, are just leaving like th there used to be more polish people here than in warsaw oh. and now i'm not really sure if that's uh -huh. still the case but uh yeah that's exactly what this is it's just this you know mm -hmm. it just it leaves you behind you know yeah. if you're really fixated on one part of any city i think or at least new york and chicago i could speak of yeah. uh you just feel you know, like you're on the outside looking in, even though you've been here for so long. And it's, I mean, I'm not familiar with that familiar with New York and never been to Chicago, but it's kind of, from what I've, know, I've heard about the gentrification, obviously there are a ton of problems with gentrification, but from the perspective of someone lives who lives there, I, and this is going to sound weird, but it's kind of like a, an, a band you really like who are kind of indie and out there getting signed and going super commercial. <laughs> Yeah. You know, the city yeah. just got super respectful, respectable and, and straight when it was just really interesting for so many years. I mean, to go to Times Square back in like the 80s and 90s, it was just mm -hmm. it was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. And then all of a sudden it turned into like a Disney thing and you're yeah. just kind of like, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. What is this? Uh, there's a there's a Friday's here. What was the point of going there anymore? You right. know, I mean, you could get that in any suburb. Right. But, I mean, there, there's so much more that's attached to it. Like, I mean, people in my my old neighborhood, my previous neighborhood, because I got priced out too, pretty much, <laughs> or kicked out. Right. <laughs> um, you know, there were people that lived in places for like 20, 30 years that it's just, oh, we're renovating and your rent's going to be like double or tripled. <laughs> Yeah. And you're just like, what? And so, you know, they were just kind of unceremoniously tossed. Hey. But, I mean, he doesn't even get into that here, of no. course. It's just more of the, you used to be cool. Yeah, what was the, <laughs> there was a track on the um, Tribe Called Quest album we reviewed that really got into that part of it. Um, I think it was the opening was, track. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, if you really want to get into, you know, the details of that, that side of gentrification, there's a song for you. Yeah. Um, but with back to New York, I love you, but you're bringing me down. Um, nice to hear a bridge that really changes the song. It Like, it's a proper bridge that just goes in a different direction. And then the so, song completely picks up in the second half. Right. It goes like from the, the, piano ballad to just hard rock. The of the album. Yeah. That, that blistering electric guitars and drums. Mm -hmm. and then the band just cuts out like near the end and right. then it just comes back to the piano ballad you get this fake ending and then mm -hmm. you get a little denouement in the yeah. uh the piano at the end right. yeah like i said it's my favorite um so yeah mine too that yeah, is just so good you brought this album in so i'm guessing you recommend it yeah um I, aside from the last two it's not really my cup of tea but it is very interesting. Um, I think if you like indie rock and, and don't mind the repetition, then yeah, I do recommend it. All right, that's it for Sound of Silver. Until next time, we'll be reviewing a Siren by Roxy Music. Always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. There you are.